Please pause the video and take a moment to read this important safety message. All right, hopefully a fun video here today at Blue Glow Electronics. So I was out cleaning up the barn a few weeks ago and just sorting tubes and whatnot. And what I thought was a box of just uh, tubes I had already gone through, sure enough, I find another nice tube in the box. Um, so you, I don't know if you can see the etching on it here, but it is an RCA Radiotron UX245 tube here, etch base. Um, it's got the nice little RCA etching here on the top. The problem with this tube, though, is the base is completely broken loose to the point that I think the pin wires are touching each other. Because when I went to test it, I had a short, and maybe maybe there is something inside the tube that's bad. But my guess is this base has just been twisted around enough that um, we've got wires touching here. So the question is, how do I get this tube base off? And once I get it off, what do I do about it? So um, first thing I'm going to do is grab a Sharpie. And right here above the RCA logo, I'm going to put a nice little mark here on the glass. Um, and I don't mind doing that because that will clean right off the glass, as you can see there. And what we're going to do now, uh, there's a lot of different tricks to this. I've seen people say, you know, use a heat gun on these and get them really hot. Um, this has been my secret I've found. Uh, it is a uh, soldering gun, uh, desoldering gun. Now this is the Heiko FR300. Gets nice and hot, um, pulls a vacuum when you pull the trigger. And so what I'm going to do here is basically just get onto the bottom of each one of these and going to let it get really hot and I can already start to see some smoke <laughs> some old solder on here for sure but I'm gonna let it get really good and hot up in there because what I want to happen and I want it to flow downhill I want the solder to actually when I start sucking to kind of flow out and if you'll notice here I have now sucked all of the solder out of that hole at this point. So I'm going to do the same with this one and kind of hold it upside down here. And you can see it kind of burning through the solder a little bit. <laughs> Similarly, you can see all the solder is now gone out of that, that hole. I'm going to hold it on it because I want it, I don't want just the tip, I want any solder way up in there to come flowing down when I do this. You can see the third one. And now... Okay, we got the last one out here. Alright, what I'm going to do at this point is basically just get me a uh, small screwdriver. And I'm going to go down in here inside of this and make sure that I can see the uh, the wire moving around really well and that it's not still soldered on up in there. Um, you can kind of hear them snapping around in there too. Yep. At this point, ta-da! Just to make sure I get these wires back in here correctly since I have, uh, since they were twisted up quite well. What I've done here, and it's a little hard to see, but you can follow the, the wires, the leads, up through the crimping in the glass up inside the tube. And you can kind of tell that it's an outer one, a middle, a center, a center, and an outer over here. And what I believe, if I follow it up and watch it go inside here, is these two center ones here are the filament. And I'm just going to ver verify that. Um, with the use of a continuity tester. Now, I could be fooled if the filament on this was bad, but... Yay. Yeah. So we've got filament there on the center too. Then we just need to kind of look inside of it and figure out here on this outer one which one then, um, if the two center ones are filament, which one and which one goes to the plate. And um, and I'm not sure I can get this on camera, but it, if you can see it through the glass here, this outer one goes up through the glass, connects to the rod that comes up and connects to the plate on this tube, which then comes up and hooks and holds this little glass suspension piece over here. 
This other side goes through, does not connect to the plate that goes on out. Instead it comes one more on the inside, which is what goes up inside the tube and connects to the grid. So it is a plate filament, filament, grid. And from there it's easy to uh, pull out a data sheet and know exactly how to put this back on here. Okay, up next what I've done is tapped into my e-tracer here with four leads. And I've came over here and um, I've got this kind of mounted in a bowl here to hold it steady. But what we've ended up with is filament, filament, um, we've got the plate here, which is the red, and then the blue here, which is the grid. And I looked down in there with a flashlight and a magnifying glass just to make sure I had no wires crossed. Make sure I've got everything up here. If you'll notice, it goes on filament, filament, plate, um, grid here, and you'll see on the screen next. Okay, and as you can see here, the mapping on this was uh, pin 1 and pin 4 were the heaters. Uh, pin 2 was the plate, and then pin 3 was the grid on the e-tracer. I have already uh, connected the unit and turned the heater on and let the heater warm up for a good minute or so here, just so the tube was nice and warmed up. And at this point, we're actually going to uh, run a tube test on it here. And we're just going to run a quick scan to validate this tube is good. And we've got curves there. And if we'll notice, uh, we're getting about 1,578 micromoles. Reference is uh, 2050, so about 77%. Um, and similar wise here on the plate current, we're measuring 24.7, reference being 36 milliamps. And so we're at about 68.8% uh, there. So 70 to 77% too, but it's good. And hey, it's a uh, single plate RCA. and. Uh, may have many, many years of good life left in it at this point. So we need to at least know the tube's good before I go and waste this uh, glue on it. Now, if you'll notice the original factory glue that was in here, I don't even think you can buy this stuff anymore um, as from, from what I've been reading. Um, but you want to leave this intact. You do not want to grind this out. Here's why. And what you're going to want to do is clean this uh, glass bottle all the way around as good as you can right here. The reason being, the glue I am using is a glue from, um, it's called Tube Base Glue Number 1. It says, do not store at frosty temperatures. Uh, read instructions before use, avoid eye contact, and it's from Emission Labs. And um, they sell this stuff. Looks like uh, I've, I've had this a couple years here. Let me focus. There we go. Um, so anyway, you can just Google for Emission Labs and buy, I, I had bought two bottles of it. But it'll tell you about this glue, and this glue is designed to kind of mix with this glue and soften it up some and adhere to the tube base, so it really causes it all to rebind. So it's, it's relying on this uh, glue here itself. It will also tell you in here that this stuff is a very strong smell. There's a little brush you'll use to put it in there with and that um, the, um, the dry time on it, two weeks. It says, sorry, during this time the tube must be upside down to keep the tube glue internally from leaking on the electrical wires. So <laughs> that is interesting, um, two weeks for full dry, dry on this. But hey, this thing's been sitting out in the barn for years and I'm just glad to be getting it fixed. So next what we need to figure out is which pins go where because now we know from our little di diagram we drew a minute ago and you remember from our little drawing I made here um, which one's the plate and whatnot and then what we need to know is what is what here right so that's not too hard if you'll notice um, you've got two small pins here and two large pins and if you'll notice on these the two large pins are the filaments, so we just need to make sure that the two large filaments there go out the back side. And we want to make sure we don't get these crossed down in here as we do this. You may not be able to see this, but I went ahead and wrote on the glass here, plate, filament, filament, grid, because I can clean that off. Um, I just want to make sure I knew where everything was going exactly the way it's supposed to go. And I'm wanting to make sure none of these wires are down in here or touching. Sorry about that. It's easy to get confusing here. So 
It should be filament filament grid plate, just like laid out right here. This is the bottom view of the tube. And if I put it in here like this, I will have filament filament grid plate. And I've got it right here. The reason I'm laying all this out and getting these wires right, I'm going to set this little bulb back down in something now at this point. And I'm going to put this glue into this. That way when I get it upside down and get it going, it does say that when you open this glue, it's kind of a yucky looking... Uh, green substance down in there and it does say to get a small screwdriver of sort and to um, stir this up very very well so I'll do that uh, kind of off, off, off screen here to give you an idea I'm just stirring it up and you can see here I'm just painting this green <laughs> glue all around down in here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit this down and I'm going to put a little layer of it here all around the bottom of this tube. You know, if you had a $5 tube, probably not worth messing with. This is not a $5 tube. All right, now we've got our glue kind of gathered together here. Now we're going to figure this out and get it put, put back together. All right, so we've got, let's see, filament, filament here on this side, which will put my grid over there. Yep, just like this. So we're now going to make sure we get that down in there. These can be a little tricky to play around with here and get all get them all in the holes. There we go. And we will fit it back in its original tight little spot right there. And it's already kind of seizing up really nicely right there. Um, and what I'm going to do is while this is still wet, I'm going to wipe off any excess off the edges right here. Okay, up next what I want to do, since I've got a little bit of dry time on these, is I am going to go ahead and solder these leads back in really well. And I'm going to let them get hot enough to pull solder down inside of this tube. And you don't have to watch all this, but you get the idea. Okay, now that we've got it soldered back in here, I'm going to take it back over on the tube tester and I'm just going to clip leads onto this and test the tube to make sure that nowhere in here have I, um, have I gotten these wires crossed again. All right, sorry for the shaky cam, but you get the idea here. I've got these uh, connected up. Same thing up here. Just ran another test and uh, tube is testing good. We actually got slightly better results this time. It might be because we've got good soldered connections and good crimps there. Uh, but we picked up 82% uh, on the GMOs and 72.9% on the current. Okay, here's what we're going to do now. Um, everything tested out good, and if you read this, it tells you you need to leave the tube upside down with the pins facing up, and you need to leave it like this for two weeks. So, um, I'm going to just mount it here in this cup holder with a few pins in it, and uh, leave it like that for two weeks, and uh, come back. At that point, it'll be good and dried. I then want to re-solder these pins and round the edges a little bit with a file to help them insert into the socket really well because I just did a rough solder job um, to hold it on there. But once everything's glued, I'll, I'll touch those up again. The other thing I was going to mention is I have seen people try to, with a loose base, try to insert glue down on the inside around the edges. I've seen people try to put epoxy I say this when I say people, I've tried it, okay, I failed. It did not work out. Uh, it just doesn't work. You need to get the base off, get the pin straight. Um, but so just so you know, I had tried testing this tube when I first brought it back, uh, brought it up here, and it, it tested shorted. So something in those wires had gotten twisted as the base had been kind of twisted around. But hey, we're gonna call that a wrap. So hope you learned something, I had fun, and uh, like I said, if you got a tube worth a hundred bucks or more, this is uh, this is probably worth your time and effort. I can't remember. I want to say this is sixteen or so dollars for a little thing of this glue, so it's not super cheap, but it does seem to do a heck of a job, and it eats into the existing glue, causing it to break down and then kind of bonds it onto the glass. So, um, having said all that, you know, let's go look up and see what a, a single page R RCA may go for. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got what's called a hanging style single black plate RCA, and that's what this tube was. Um, as you can see here, a pair of them, $432. A single's probably a $100, $150 tube. Uh, if only it was a single black plate 2A3, now that would be a very expensive tube. 
um, but a lot of your 45s were the single black plate. Um, just not all of them were in the globe style like this. And you can see here it's the same UX245 tube. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll keep bringing them to you.